Hello everyone, how's it going? My name is Henry and welcome back to the channel. So in real life, I recently got my multi-engine rating, which is pretty cool because I can fly planes like this now in real life. Um, I actually got my multi-engine rating on a DA42NG. Um, this is the DA62 included with uh, Microsoft Flight Sim 2020. Source is going to talk about a multi-rating today. And again, I'm not a flight instructor. I'm just talking about my personal experiences. If you are thinking of getting your multi-engine uh, rating in real life in Canada, or if you just want to know more about flying multi-engine aircraft, this video is for you. So I have five main points I'm going to talk about today. So stick around and let's get flying. Okay, the first point I want to mention when getting your multi-engine rating is knowing your air speeds, especially VYSE. So again, we're talking about VY. So again, for this aircraft, I'm not really sure about the 62, but for the 42, um, your VY single engine is 85 knots. So basically what that means, if we lose an engine, let's say left or right, doesn't matter. So a VYSE is basically your best rate of climb for a single engine. And if you have a good old steam gauge, as you can see here, it's the blue line. So for the speech uh, in X-Plane, it's 100 knots. That is your VYSE. Because again, when, when you're dealing with multi-engine aircraft, you have kind of two sets of speeds, right? Like you have your primary speeds, um, but then you have your different speeds uh, when you have an engine out. So again, we're taking off from uh, Collingwood here. I'll just give full power, everything else is good to go here. Uh, let's do a quick example here. So um, let's say if something happens and we lose an engine. Uh, let's just take the uh, full power back here. The thing about the flight sim is that you can't turn off the autopilot stabilization system. So like it has like a system that helps stabilize the aircraft. So like let's say if we just lost an engine, what do I do now? Okay, I pitch for uh, 85 knots. So this is going to be my best uh, climb I can kind of achieve right here. And you might notice there that losing a single engine, we took a massive hit on our uh, climb rate. Uh, and even if I'm going for around 85 or best uh, uh, VY SE, um, 85 knots, like I was only getting like maybe 500 feet there realistically. Um, it'll probably be a lot less in real life. But again, it is actually remarkable how much power you lose in a light twin. There's actually a, a performance uh, quote that I'm going to quote here and that is with 50% reduction in engine power so losing an engine you can lose 80% of your climb performance which is crazy like think about that if you're on a weird uh, takeoff or if you're on a weird uh, approach and you have to do a go around you have to make sure that your climb gradients are okay because if you lose an engine and let's say it's a thousand feet per minute you'll lose an engine you can lose like 800 feet per minute so you can only gain 200 feet per minute on a single engine so again, it's incredibly important to know these speeds. I know I'm not really coronated. It's really important to be able to know your speeds and just pitch for it. And regarding losing an engine, leading into our second point for today is your engine out procedures. All right, so the benefit of having a multi-engine aircraft is that you have more than one engine, which is pretty fancy. Uh, of course, that means more procedures. You have to know what to do when you lose one of those engines because like we just said as soon as you lose an engine you can lose at least 80 percent of your total climb performance and it's it's insane really like again if you're on a weird approach or if you're doing a go around you have to know your procedures so while it's different for every aircraft there is kind of a standard that's taught and it kind of sticks around with you for the rest of your career so control power drag identify verify and feather what the heck does this all mean? So let's get into a little bit of an example here in crew. So I'm just gonna bring the power back around here. Uh, let's just stabilize right here. So I'm gonna pause the sim for a second and I'm gonna turn off an engine pretending we have an engine failure. Let's go with our, uh, let's take this off. Oh, gosh dang it, flight sim, there you go. So let's take off our uh, right engine for now. So let's see what happens as soon as you lose an engine. So as you can see, let me pause it again, we're going to have a slight bank off and the important thing is to notice this happening in the first place. So again, going back to our checklist is control. 
So you have to be able to keep the aircraft in coronation. So again, see that ball? We want to make sure that we're able to keep the ball, make sure that we're able to fly the aircraft, and of course, keep it stabilized and in control. So now that you have it controlled, and again, this is all happening really fast, you want to give full power. And this is for all the, uh, as you can see, I did full power for both. And the reason why is twofold, is that firstly, like we said before, you lose 80% of your climb performance, even in cruise, it's important because the second part is that it leads into identify. The third part of the sequence is drag. So what do you mean by drag? Well, things that cause drag. So again, I just have the uh, aircraft configured here back normal. I know this is not correct air speeds, everything else. I'm just doing this for demonstration. So things that produce drag, landing gear, flaps, things like that. So again, when you come to an engine failure in like, for example, the approach phase, especially because again, your lower airspeeds are more uh, vulnerable. Let's get a descent going. Um, let's say we have a go around and it's like, oh, okay, max power, cool. And then all of a sudden, let's say, boom, you lose an engine. Oh my gosh, what's going on? Well, here, you have your gear down. You have your landing flap down. First thing you wanna do, again, for the 42 anyways, is your flap gear flaps. So retract the landing flaps, get the gear up, positive rate of climb, and then you get your flaps up. So again, you wanna reduce drag as much as possible so then you're not shooting yourself in the foot. So you're able to maintain that climb out. And even at, you know, you know altitude, you wanna be able to make sure that you're reducing your drag. So if you have full power, you're able to easily identify the engine that is out. So again, I'm flying on coordinator right now. You can see the ball going off to the left. I'm just gonna stabilize that. Um, so again, we can tell that we've lost an engine. Looking over here to our G1000, you can easily identify, oh, it's like 0% load, RPM's lower, fuel flow is lower. You can look at the oil pressure and everything else. Chances are, it's gonna be this engine that's out, our right engine. Another saying is dead foot, dead engine. So as soon as you lose an engine, you're gonna have a massive amount of force on your rudder. So you might ask yourself, what does dead foot, dead engine mean? And again, it's a really important uh, factor to remember here. And that is, if you look, it's kind of hard to s t show you in the sim, but if you look at the rudders there, I'm giving a lot of left rudder and I'm not really using my right rudder. So my right rudder is quote unquote a dead foot because I'm not using it. So that's an easily indication that the right side is the side that has failed. So again, you can verify this by retarding the throttle of the actual engine that you believe has failed. So in this case, it is going to be our right engine. So again, we've identified it for a dead foot, dead rudder, or sorry, dead foot, dead engine. So I'm going to bring back the power of this guy. And again, there's no, no change, which means that yes, we did select the correct engine. And of course, feather. So now that we have the correct engine, we're going to feather it. And what that means is that if you watched my uh, RPM video in the uh, description and or the little icon up here, you know, the little bullets, um, what feathering is, is that we're going to take the propeller and we're going to reduce the drag. So again, we're feathering the aircraft. So again, depending what aircraft you're flying, um, basically you're basically securing the engine. So I'll just pause the uh, sim momentarily. Uh, so to feather the uh, 42, I'm not sure about the 62, but literally, as soon as you turn the master off, so again, we identified the right engine. I'm going to turn this master off. The uh, FADEX, so since this is a computer flying, it automatically uh, feathers the engine here. And then, of course, you turn the alternator off. That's off. You turn the fuel off, which, again, we've already done because we're simulating this. But if this wasn't a FADEX, so again, if we had our mixture and RPM levers, then, of course, we would go through the procedure of, like, feathering the engine, turning the mixture off, things like that. And then the engine's secure. And then we fly, and we have to remember that for the 42 anyways, our VYSE, so like our best uh, rate of climb with a single engine there, um, is the 85 knots. So we don't want to go below that, right? And the thing is, is that as soon as you lose an engine, um, you have something called drift down. The other thing you have to realize is that your maximum altitude, so your max service ceiling, drops a lot as well so like for example for a 42 um let's say you could go up to like eighteen thousand feet or something but as soon as you lose an engine so like half your power depending on like you know the uh, weather conditions everything else you might be limited to eight thousand feet 
So it's important to know your maximum uh, service ceiling, which is, of course, being able to achieve at least 100 feet per minute climb. It's important to know that before you fly, so then if you're flying through mountains and whatnot, you can still see if you're able to safely maintain your altitude or not. Because if the cliffs are at like 10,000 feet, and you can only maintain 8,000 feet on a single engine, chances are that might be not a good idea to fly into the mountain area. So you might have to take a different path around that. A lot of airlines, they have, of course, their own procedures and doing, uh, for doing all this. Something else that's really important when uh, flying multi-engine is something called the critical engine. Now, what the heck is a critical engine? Aren't both engines critical? So here, I'll, I'll have to use a little diagram for this one. So I'm just going to go out of the aircraft here. And we're going to do a quick pause because, again, I don't want to have to keep coordinating this aircraft. So I'm just going to take a screenshot here. Boop. And then we're going to use the screenshot here. And then I'm just going to keep talking. So on a propeller, there's more thrust generated on the downstroke of a propeller. All right. So pretty much on this aircraft, so the on the right side of each propeller, we're going to have more thrust. All right. And what a critical engine is, is that if you lose this engine, it's going to be a lot harder because it's going to be a lot harder to maintain your directional control because, again, looking at both the, these on our left engine, it's close to the uh, main fuselage, right? So the uh, thrust being generated. But on this one, on our right side, the thrust is farther which means if we lose our left engine, which is our critical engine, look at this arm for the center of the aircraft. We're going to have to maintain a lot more rudder because this arm is farther than a left engine. So that's what a critical engine is, is that um, if we lose our left engine, it'll be a lot... We're going to have to work a lot harder to maintain our directional control. So um, again, it's important to know what critical engine your aircraft has and again it depends if you have contra rotating the propellers so if they both rotate the same way like most air, air like most twins like this twin then you will have a critical engine but if they both turn opposite directions so if our left engine let's say uh, the prop goes right and our right engine the prop goes left then you don't have a critical engine because they're both it doesn't matter which one you lose in the sense that like they're both operating different ways. Uh, so hopefully I didn't confuse you too much, but it's important to know uh, for critical engines, like uh, which, which one it is for your aircraft. Okay, second last thing we're going to talk about today is what is an accelerated stop distance? All right. So again, with a single engine aircraft, it's pretty straightforward. If you lose an engine, you just stop on the runway. Um, what accelerated stop is, is that for light twins, you've probably heard pilots say, or especially if you're in a flight summer flying, is your different V-speeds. So like your V1, your rotate, your V2, and then pause to rate, gear up, etc. What V1 is, is that, of course, your decision speed. So you base, it's a calculation between like your distance, end of the runway. If you lose an engine, this is where you can stop. If you're beyond this distance, keep going. Or speed, sorry. Uh, what an accelerated stop is that for light twins many aircraft don't have a v1 speed for example i'm not sure about the 62 but for the 42 the one i learned on it had it doesn't have a v1 speed because again the engines they aren't really super powerful enough to quote unquote have a published v1 speed so what you use instead is something called an accelerated stop distance so again for light twin aircraft what accelerated stop distance is that it's your takeoff distance plus your landing distance plus 300 feet. So why do we do this? So your takeoff distance makes sense, how much distance you need to take off. What the 300 feet is, is that, well, again, it probably depends on the aircraft, for the 42 anyways, it gives you two seconds approximately to notice a problem. So again, if you look at your engine gauges and all of a sudden it's just like, oh wait, why is my oil pressure going down? Or I can't get full RPM on my like starboard engine or something then you have your landing distance to come to a complete stop on the runway. So it's important to know your accelerated stop distance because again if this is 5,000 feet this runway and your accelerated stop distance is let's say 3,000 feet then you know that you have well let's say like an extra 2,000 feet so you have plenty of runway if you have an engine problem and you have to stop. So um, 
So if you're going down the runway, boom, you're good. Um, if you're in the air, then of course you pitch for 85 and then you come back. So whatever your uh, single engine VY speed is. So again, it's 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 one of those new calculations that you should do every time you go flying. And again, it's you you look at your conditions and you just say, okay, well, uh, chances are, um, if I'm landing at this airport, can I take off again? Like if it's sure, I can land if it's only thousand feet, um, and I can technically take off because, like, let's say my takeoff roll is only like seven hundred feet, but like if I lose an engine, am I going to have enough? Uh, speed to be able to stop. So it's just a lot of these little things that you have to be able to ask yourself. All right, the last thing I want to mention about multi-engine flying for today is that it's extremely fun. Like again, there is a lot you have to learn, but again, dealing with more performance, high rate of climbs, higher air speeds generally, it is a very, very fun experience. And I highly recommend if you're able to do it in real life or even just fly more on the sim. Like you're going to notice a <laughs> I don't want to say super change, depending on what you're doing, but it's definitely a thrill, and it's nice being able to have not a prop, have no props in front of you. Like it's kind, of, it's kind of a weird feeling, but it's definitely a wonderful experience. Yes, it is more expensive because hey, you're looking after two engines and generally a larger aircraft. But honestly, if you can, I'd say at least fly once, you know, with a single engine aircraft it, or multi engine aircraft. It, it is absolutely a pleasure to fly. And there you go, folks. Let me know in the comments below if you have your multi-engine rating or if it's something you're interested in. Or if you just like to fly multi-engine airplanes in uh, flight sims or not. And like, what, what do you usually do? Do you find it weird? Do you like them? Do you not like them? Let me know in the comments below. If you have any questions, I will try my best to answer them. Again, I'm not a CFI. I'm just a guy who loves flying in real life and practicing in flight sim. So let me know questions below. Thanks again for watching everyone. Have a great day and as always, fly safe and happy landings.